A judge's wife holding a position of power for more than two decades, a position she might not have a right to much longer. Could you just give us a few minutes and talk to us about this issue that we've raised, please? An elected school board member holding a seat on a technical college board, potentially violating the state's ban on dual office holding. What's the fix for this? By operation of law, one of those offices becomes invalid. We've spent weeks asking lawmakers with the power to fix this to go on the record. I want to talk to you about uh, Kim Birch and the situation with the delegation. Hey, I'm Jody Barr with Queen City News out of Charlotte. But, it's, but it, does, it just seems as though that it's been there for 20 some odd years. Why now? Tell me, tell me what happened. Well, because I've just made aware of it and we're talking about an elected official. More than 20 years ago, the South Carolina governor appointed Kimberly Birch to the Northeastern Technical College Board. A decade later, Birch ran for a seat on the Chesterfield County School Board and won. Both jobs require her to vote. The state attorney general believes one person holding both of those offices could be violating the state's ban on a single person holding two offices of honor or profit. The Chesterfield County Legislative Delegation now knows what we uncovered here, but not one of those lawmakers would schedule an interview to talk about it or what they plan to do about this. Not until Queen City News Chief Investigator Jody Barr went to Columbia to find them. Here's the second half of Positions of Power, a Queen City News investigation. It's not unusual in the news business to ask a public official for an interview, then be ignored. Sometimes when the story calls for it, you can do it without them. Other times, finding the people responsible for fixing a problem is necessary. The Senate, please come to order. We went to the South Carolina State House last week looking for five lawmakers Senators Gerald Malloy and Penry Gustafson, and Representatives Pat Hennigan, Cody Mitchell, and Richie Yao. The five make up the Chesterfield County Legislative Delegation, the lawmakers responsible for finding people to serve on the Northeastern Technical College Board. None of the five would agree to interview with us about the questions we uncovered with Kimberly Birch's position of power. Our first stop. How are you guys? What's going on? Representative Richie Yao's house office. I want to talk to you about uh, Kim Birch and the situation with the delegation. Yao was the only one of the five who invited us in when we found him in his office last week. The way the law reads that that we'll have to take it up, but that's we can't, we don't get rid of people, but we replace them or when new people are appointed. Does a delegation believe that Ms. Birch is violating the dual office holding provision? We haven't met, um, and there's so many interpretations that we have, and so I've sent off to get a, opinions on it. Not opinion, not official opinions, but I've asked legal for advice on it. What do you believe at this point? Well, it doesn't matter what I believe. It matters what's the law. I'll go by what the law says, and we'll go from there. We tried to speak with Representatives Cody Mitchell and Pat Hennigan. We couldn't find them between state house meetings to ask what they plan to do to investigate the dual office holding question. What was Senator Wiesberg? We found the senators late in the day at this committee meeting. Like the House members, Malloy and Gustafson got the same messages we sent before we showed up to find them last week. Hey, I'm Jody Barr with Queen City News out of Charlotte. Uh, nice to meet you. Are you here to talk to me about Chesterfield and the appointment. Kim Birch. Yes. Yes, ma'am. And you got me on film right now. Well, that's why I emailed you some days ago. Saying, I know, I know. Gustafson says she was too busy with Senate business to deal with the questions we raised in our messages to her office last month. But she did ask for yet another attorney general opinion specific to Kimberly Birch. It is absolutely clear what the law is on appointments, and it's up to us uh, legislators, as senators, to clear it up when there's a problem. So, the, rest assured, it is. It's when you brought it to my attention. That's when I realized. Okay. So, um, if I didn't fully respond, I'm sorry about that. I actually appreciate the fact that you brought that to my attention, and we'll be taking care of that as soon as we can. You, and I, I promise you, we will. Do you all agree, as a delegation, that the attorney general's opinions regarding this situation, that Miss Birch is dual office holding? Uh, well, I will tell you, most of the time I don't disagree with the Attorney General. Very rarely do I disagree with the Attorney General. Um, 
and we ask for opinions from him for this very purpose to clear up things. So okay. probably yes. You, you think she can remain on this technical college board and be an elected school board member knowing what you know right now? Probably not. But um, again, I, I have to really look at it carefully, and frankly, I have not. Okay. Senator Gerald Malloy is the longest serving member of the Chesterfield County delegation. He's also practiced law for 35 years. Can we talk to you about this uh, situation with Kim Birch? Very, very briefly, I'm, I just tell you, I'm aware of it. When you, um, I talked to the delegation, mm -hmm. what the delegation did was they sent a note. Um, and first of all, I'm, I'm, it's one percent of the district for me. For my, Three percent of the county is mine. Three percent. Malloy never responded to any of our emails we sent him last month. Emails that included every detail we've reported here and copies of the attorney general opinions showing Kimberly Birch is likely violating the dual office holding prohibition. Instead of responding to our questions, Malloy admitted he called Birch's husband, Judge Paul Birch. Malloy says the judge told him what the judge told us on that sidewalk in Pageland. There is no court precedent out there that would even come close to ruling on that. And, and the attorney general's opinion is just an opinion and there's other lawyers um, that yeah. have different opinions. But I, I've just heard others say, you know, if you don't have two oaths of office, they don't know why those opinions are out there. So, so that ball is in their court right now. They're aware of the situation. You got a circuit court judge who, um, as um, my understanding, I, I called him and asked him, you can't have two offices if, if it's um, if you were, you know, in, in, in government. Um, I'm not certain what the issue is. They said if it's got to be sworn offices or if it's not, but you can only have one. Malloy wouldn't give his opinion on whether he, as a licensed attorney, believes those AG opinions or what he'll ask his delegation to do with this. But if Paul Birch wasn't involved, would this be a different response so. from the delegation? I don't think so. I think, you know. I think that. I think that he, I think that he's not involved. Um, I think that it's, it's 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 his wife, right? It is his wife, but I mean, so he's technically not involved. I mean, it's it's mm -hmm. a decision that she has to end up making, and the delegation needs to end up seeing whether or not they need to end up acting or not. Well, as and an attorney, as, as a whole, right? But as an attorney in that circuit, is there some hesitation from you to get to the bottom of this, no, given I have that hesitation on anything in my life, Jody? Well, I, I just, I'm just telling you. I, I would think that you, you know, but, we, but we're not speculating here. We're just talking about an issue that you that you've uncovered after 25 years now. I want the public to know we went, you know, you're the senior senator in the delegation well, in that some may look at you and say, Malloy's an attorney, he's a smart attorney. You I, had to know. Well, you've been talking to my wife or somebody. Or somebody <laughs> I know your reputation. Smart. You know what you're doing. Oh, you know what you're doing. But I just wanted to make sure that. So I don't. So I don't. I don't know how you. I don't know what happened then. I haven't researched what happened okay. then. If it's determined that someone is holding two positions of honor, violating the South Carolina Constitution, mm -hmm. should that person resign? I believe that that it would be incumbent on any public official to resign the first position, just based on the fact that South Carolina law says you've abdicated that first position. But the law is on Kimberly Birch's side for now. Although the USC law professor says she technically abandoned the technical college board when she was elected to the school board, state law allows her to continue holding and voting in both offices. That is, until the delegation decides to replace her. Something the delegation hasn't done in 25 years and doesn't appear ready to do anytime soon. Doesn't seem to me to be proper to hold on to the authority of that position. However, there's South Carolina case law that says you can continue to exercise that authority until a court declares you to have abdicated it. So I think there'd be reason for a person in that situation to think, well, I can continue to act as long as everybody's okay with it. Last week, we informed South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster about our findings. The governor's office responded late Friday with this letter to the legislative delegation. In it, the governor's office agreed with the information we uncovered writing absent additional information or clarification concurrent service by miss birch on both the commission and the school board would seemingly violate the constitutional prohibition of dual office holding the governor's letter also revealed an ag opinion from 32 years ago an opinion then representative kimberly birch asked for 
back when she was a member of the South Carolina House. That opinion was a dual office holding question. The governor also informed the delegation that eight of the nine Northeastern Technical College board members' terms are expired. The governor asked the delegation to send him names so those members can be either reappointed or replaced. The governor's office sent this letter to the delegation telling them there's nothing the governor can do here until the delegation sends the governor another person to appoint to replace Kimberly Birch. If the delegation fails to find someone to replace Birch, there is another step to remove her from the college board. A taxpayer would have to go to the Chesterfield County Courthouse and file a lawsuit asking a judge to rule on the dual office holding question. That lawsuit would be filed in the same courthouse where Judge Paul Birch presides and where his portrait hangs.